thing is when we get done you've got to go oh shit i forgot to start recording it and then we can start again. or like you have to start it and like one of us has to be like oh we're recording now are we recording <laughs> like there's so many podcasts that start like that yeah, yeah. well we are oh we are oh, good okay good. Well, wait there we're you recording <laughs> <laughs> we did it and we've just joined that party all, all right. right uh so let's get this show on the road um the show that you're listening to is called James Podcast. Yeah, did I say it right? You said James, James Bond. James Bond. Bond. Cast. Like seconds Bond. ago. Bond. Yeah. You're right. You're right. I fucked up already. James Bond. Speaking of me saying I fucked up, we can feel free to curse. Feel free to say whatever you want. This is a disgusting, disgusting podcast. Um, so you're listening to James Bondcast. Uh, my name is Matt McGregor. Uh, we're here with uh, my two good friends, Harris McCabe and Colin Shaw. And... Say hello, guys. Hello. Hi. I kind of took their intros away, but that's okay. They'll they'll introduce themselves next time. Um, uh, so this is a show that is uh, about our love for James Bond films. This uh, podcast may not be the first James Bond podcast out there, but it is the only one that involves the three of us, certainly. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's going great so far. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what we aim to do here is each month we're going to focus on uh, a James Bond film in the echelon of James Bond films in the order that they were released, leading up to ultimately if we are sane enough to continue doing this for two years, our final show will be uh, for the new James Bond film that's coming out in November of 2019. Including a couple of non-canon James Bond films, right? Yeah, well, actually, uh, we wanted to start this in August. Uh, it is now September so 2017. So now we're going to bail on the other one? So we might have to bail on the non-canon. The Royale uh, so weird, though. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe we'll do a special month where, where, where we'll do, like, two uh, yeah. shows or something. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. Um, so that's how that's going to go. Um, so today... Uh, we're going to be doing the first James Bond film, Dr. No, from 1962. Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Uh, he's the first person to ever play James Bond. Is that true? Not true. There was like a TV there show a or TV something? There was a TV show. I can't remember the name of the actor, but there was a, it was called like Action, you know, some TV serialized thing where they did an adaptation of Casino Royale. Right. I thought so. See, like that was my initial. Barry something, I want to say. I don't know. We have the internet, but we refuse to use it. Yeah. Well, but I, I mean, you guys can you guys can Google that. Yeah, Colin, yeah. that has to be you. Oh, okay. I'll do that. <laughs> um, but we'll go ahead. In and the continue. meantime, yeah, continue talking. So he was the first James Bond in the broccoli produced set of movies, and also the first James Bond in so a feature film. Elaborate on that. This film was produced by the vegetable known as broccoli. Yes, it was made by broccoli. Yes. Uh, uh, tell people the whole who, broccoli family actually got involved. Um, what is it, Albert Broccoli and, uh, and, Cubby. and Albert Cubby broccoli. Cubby Broccoli? And it may be Broccoli. I don't actually know. I've just only. I don't seen think it anyone written. knows. Um, and I'm sure he's used to correcting people uh, if he's still alive, which he may not be. Um, and who is the other guy? Saltzman? Is that Harry the other? Harry, S. S. Harry Saltzman? Saltzman? Is that it? That's, I don't know if there's an S. We may be making up all these names. Yeah. It's, it's entirely possible. We that did those are zero both made research for this yes. show. But, I actually uh, no, feel like it's fresher right. if I know nothing about the thing I'm talking about. Ian Fleming's the author. Uh, right. Broccoli's uh, produced the... Bro broccoli produced the, the film. Are we going to just commit to one of those? I feel like we should just I call like broccoli. broccoli. I, I broccoli. really like broccoli also. I, prefer it <laughs> I hate cheese. broccoli, but it's a, solid, uh, it's a solid name. I actually especially like it because I think it's probably not pronounced broccoli, and I feel like we're just, just walking into a wall every time we say it. Good. Let's, let's continue. Let's continue. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, we're just sort of going to focus on this one movie. I think we should approach it as if, like, let's try not to compare it right now, at least, to the other films. Let's pretend, you know, like, this is the first, I mean, it is the first movie of its kind. Like, they didn't have the other films to compare it to. Um, so let's just treat it like it's, you know, just a standalone movie. Like, they never thought that they were going to have sequels, you know. it's just and every week we can be surprised that they made another one. 
Yeah. Exactly. Well, they do sometimes tell you that James Wan will, will return. return in yeah, whatever. you know, I forgot to check that out. Did they say I that? Think, I think they do. No, they. I don't think they did. Did they? I didn't. I don't remember. I, wow, we're I watched so all the credits. Bad at this. Yes. Uh, yeah. This I absolutely. watched the credits too. I thought they did. Say well, that. I actually think this whole podcast should be just us debating how we should do this podcast. And, <laughs> and well, arguing yeah, about, I arguing mean, about the rules. <laughs> well, I found out the guy's name. It's Barry Nelson from 1954. Barry Nelson. Yeah. What a generic actor yeah. name. He doesn't I'm even Barry really sound. Nelson. That doesn't sound British to me. I mean, I know no, it, he wasn't, it could he was, be. He was yeah. playing J- James or Jimmy Bond of the CIA. I think. Oh, oh course. he adapted it to. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyways, we're not talking about that movie. That's a totally different movie, and it isn't a movie at all. In fact, so let's. What stop. would Barry Nelson's name be if he was British, though? Well, it's like the British equivalent of that B- name. Bernard. 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 I think Nelson still. <laughs> Nelson. Uh, yeah, maybe like Nelson. Yeah, Admiral know. Bernard Nelson. Yeah. I feel like Nelson Shire. They always have to Nelson stick like Shire. a Shire or like a Bridge, Cambridge, I, something. They have stupid You're things. just doing place names. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so I was going to say, much like this series uh, or this these series of movies, they, they didn't quite know exactly what they were doing yet at this point. So there's this movie has a lot of tropes and things that that don't really come into this series until a little bit later and i feel like this podcast this first episode at least will be slightly you know we're still kind of uh, figuring out i'm trying to think of a james bond like uh comparison to we're say, good, like, yeah like they didn't have q and his gadgets until much later right our so gadgets we, are still we might not have some gadgets today in the lab and we're going to develop yeah. some gadgets and maybe even mm-hmm. a q character who in this one is not called q um and is not played by Desmond Llewellyn, which we don't know about because we've never seen any of the future movies that we just decided that we wouldn't talk about them. That's right. There is no Q in this yeah, movie. Well, yeah. we could say things There's like no Q that. But uh, I'm unclear on the rules already. But um, I did want to point out that we talked about uh, uh, Broccoli, Broccoli and Saltzman uh, having the rights to this movie, and this wasn't the first uh, James Bond book that Ian Fleming wrote. The reason they selected it to be the first James Bond movie was because it would be the cheapest because it was a, pretty much a single location and you know right. relatively modest in terms of stunts and effects and the you know high concept set pieces. That's interesting. I didn't read that fact, but that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I, I read that. It's it's only two places. Mm-hmm. Most of the other ones have more than two places. What were the two places? Jamaica, Jamaica and, and London. London. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When is he in London? In the beginning? At the yeah. beginning. Just for the. Do you see the scenes. outside? Of, do you see anything other than M's like I, office? I feel like we saw. Well, we saw the little his little gentleman's club where he's gambling, um, and we saw. I think we saw some exteriors, but you they mean, could have been anywhere. The, you mean exteriors? Yeah. 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 There's, but they're not with him in them. You know what I mean? They're like exteriors. Yeah, we saw his apartment, which is sort of a rarity. You only see his apartment in a couple of movies. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like you know what? Before Bond's we get into why this. Why don't you go watch the movie? Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. You can come back and we'll finish the podcast. But, but, I, uh, but I think they're all, all that stuff's in, in a studio. Right. Um, so before we get into like the intricacies of the plot, I think we should just kind of mention that what we hope to do on this show, we may run out of time. We may... Uh, you know, not get to do everything, but um, yeah. What are we at the, like the thirty minute mark right now? Yeah, <laughs> we want to go through the movie and sort of talk about the James Bond elements that will ultimately become like staples of the series, and just sort of like dissect them and and determine whether or not or like where on the scale of existing James Bond films that they fall. So Ooh. like since this is the first one, we don't have much to compare it to. I've got an idea. Sure, let's let's hear it. do that. Opening title. Great. Okay. So the opening title sequence is a thing that we all know happens in James Bond films. And in other films. Yes. Uh, but this one, you know, they kind of um, sort of do an art directed. Uh, it's a very, it's like a Saul Bass type of intro by Maurice Binder was the animator who did it. But it's a, it's a cool little Saul Bass intro. It reminds me a little bit of like Thomas Crown Affair, which I think was a later movie. Is it ever Saul Bass? Is he like, does he ever do these? Or oh, it, does he ever do Bond ones? Yeah. Like I later, that would be an interesting bit of trivia for us to look up. Yeah, in, I don't think he advance. does. I don't think so either. Um, he's famous for like uh, he's famous Alfred for Hitchcock he did some Hitchcock stuff. stuff North by Northwest, famously. I think he did Psycho, um, a few others, uh, but he and, did and he did more. a lot more. Like he was huge. He did, did a lot of title title sequences, uh, charade, um, a bunch of them. I, he might have even done the Thomas Crown Affair. I'm not sure, um, but anyways, yeah. So he did a lot of these, and it was very similar to that. In like you know. 
sort of it, a lot of his are very simplistic. They're animated. They're primary colors. And we had the like the in this one, it's the the circles moving across the screen as the uh, theme song plays. I feel like this one hints at where they're where they're going with having opening title sequences because you still get like color graphics. You still get silhouettes of the human body. And if you count them dancing and the way they're dancing as being sexy, then I do you not, get sexy. Okay, I, yeah. I do not count that. It was it was this weird like you bossa, get an attempt at sexy. It was weird bossa nova <laughs> yeah. music and like silhouetted dancers, which reminded me of like um, what's the uh, Mulholland Drive, like the weird yeah. swing dancers at the beginning of that. But it was very very strange. And then we go to the of course the three blind mice walking in the yeah. animated three blind mice, which tonally uh, you know. And they go through like three different. They start off with the Bond theme, which we all know and love, which. At this point, was just the, the theme of our time, movie. Yeah, you know? <laughs> this is the first time that people ever heard this song. I mean, this movie came out in 1962. Um, it had no other uh, outlet to have been heard. This is it. This is the premiere of this song, and I think it like works perfectly as an opening and also like as the theme of the movie throughout. It, yeah, it comes up yeah. in the movie again, <clears throat> and they must have every time they heard that song come on screen, they must have been like, "Oh man, we nailed it." That's fucking gold because it is. It's like a classic. If you've never even heard it before, even if it's not iconic to you, it's a great movie song. It just works for the yeah. character. I don't know if that's because it's ingrained in my bones at this point, but like, uh, I do feel that it um, sort of embodies everything. It's kind of like smooth and but like, a little bit dangerous. But a little bit dangerous. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. I think if it was disconnected from a story or a theme, you would still like just like it, you know, as a song. Um, and then, and then it goes into a weird bossa nova song, and then it goes into a like a calypso version of Three Blind Mice. Yeah, and I'm not sure. This is right around the time that I think reggae was developing in Jamaica. So I think it's odd that the movie's set in Jamaica, but we don't really get any real reggae or rocksteady or ska music. It's all kind of like it's island music, but it's kind of we get more shells. Like, it's it's very calypso y. Yeah, that's we, it. We also get like some like hints at a Jamaican accent, but instead of saying like mon, they're saying man. Yeah, it's you know? definitely yeah, there wasn't a lot of doesn't seem like a lot of authenticity to the Jamaica here, even though it was shot on location in Jamaica. Yeah, I wonder yeah. like I guess I believe they dubbed a lot of those those actors too. Um with somebody probably toning down whatever their real accent was. <laughs> you sound too ethnic. <laughs> um, yeah, I th thought, you know, it does feel not cheap, but like inexpensive in that the, you know, they do shoot for shooting a movie shooting in Jamaica that you're right. There's not that many like beautiful vistas or like, you know, epic shots and things like that, that they normally kind of incorporate. Right. In yeah. Like the big, like wide angle of just like a stunning view of like a, a place you know yeah um, um we do get we go right from our theme into the the theme and the opening credits end with the um animated three blind mice who i guess we could talk about this is a sort of the first of a james bond tradition yeah. of our henchmen they get introduced early right opening scene we see three blind men with canes uh, who end up being kind of the main henchmen and if i'm Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they sort of don't reach a conclusion with these characters. They drop them totally. They, they drop them. Yeah. They, well, that was my question because I do think we see them die, but but it's never. They don't really make a point of it. It's. I think they're in the hearse when it careens off the. Oh, thing that's later. right. Yeah. So, in a car and that's chase. What, and yeah. I remember when I saw that, I was like, "Wait, is that the end of the? They didn't even show the fuckers in the car. Like, yeah. Okay, you know. But it's. I mean. But it's basically they're the henchmen, and on the other hand, the other secondary henchman is the geologist. Um, it's. Uh, so it's, it's not. It's not even really henchmen. It's like a lot of Bonds have like what you could call like a showcase assassin. Right. You know what I mean? Like and an in enemy one, that is an underboss, but is also like a very unique character to the film. And in this one, it's totally these three guys who are pretending to be blind, who walk around with silencers and assassinate people, only they're not great at their job. And also they die sort of unceremoniously. Should we try and go through the plot like in, in order? Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. let's try it. So we've got our opening title... We get the three blind mice characters who are three African-American dudes uh, who appear to actually be blind, right? They're mm -hmm. kind of... But they really... We find out later. They're we find probably out pretty quick. Not, they, yeah. they pretty much murder a guy. Who Strange like, ways. Str Strang ways. Strang ways. Yeah. Strang ways. yeah. yeah. I wrote Strang that down because yeah. that's, um, that's an interesting name. I yeah, thought for good. sure he'd be 
like a bad guy with a name like that. Sounds like but, but was, that still but sounds just British like, though. He was just like the Jamaican James Bond. He was like the James Bond that doesn't travel that much. Right. He yeah. hangs out in Jamaica, does his thing, and he's gotten a little fat and lazy down there because they kill him pretty, pretty easily. easily. Well, yeah. all he cares about is bridge and fishing, according yeah. to his like cronies. Yes. yes. But he was doing research. So some of that was yeah, the, the fishing, fishing was, was a cover. Research. Yeah. But he does, you know, sort of. He gives the three blind mice money, and then he turns his back on them. And he's like, "They're blind guys. It's not like they. It's not like some assassin would pretend to be blind just to get let my guard down." And so Strangway sucks at his job, yeah. um, and he but, gets he gets killed, which sort of launches the whole plot in motion. It's sort of a nice intro to James Bond too. It's like the, he was sort of the James Bond maybe before James Bond, um, and I, once he dies, they have to bring in it the does, next guy. It's, I feel like he's not a field agent though. He's like an attaché. Mm. It sets the stakes, though, because he's definitely like a guy who's working for the same, you know, he's working yeah. for MI6, which I think in this movie is called MI7 for some reason. I don't know why, but I didn't M, M calls it that. And I think in uh, in the future it will be MI6. But maybe there's some historical thing we don't know about because we're not. Because and, and because we didn't research it. Yeah. Um, terrible. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, that we're just three is... guys who love James Bond. <laughs> we just three don't guys care about research. <laughs> I don't do much reading. <laughs> But I sure like to talk. Um, so then they head on. Uh, so then we head over to London, and we actually get sort of the plot going, where we see the the MI six MI seven facility where they learn that the guy from Jamaica ain't there anymore. They kill his secretary too. Oh yeah, they right. kill his secretary too. Quite viciously, and they like kind of show it. And yeah, they all get in different windows, and they all punch out each window with <laughs> the guns, and then all shoot. Like it was really overkill for a other. secretary yeah. who didn't seem like she was about to like defend herself. She had no idea. She didn't even know what she did there. I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I was going to murder someone, that's probably the best way to do it. Yes, yeah. definitely. Just get a bunch of buddies, surround them when they don't know what the hell's going on, and everyone shoot them at once a ton of times. That's actually the most effective way to murder somebody, which is something that these guys, this assassin organization, clearly knew and yeah. then forgot after they killed the secretary. Yeah, they just. I don't know. They. It's, it was a big letdown. How much they built up the three blind mice and their like intimidation factor, and then they just like, you know, come back in later in a car chase and then consistently die. drop. I would have ball. loved to have Doctor No at the end, like in his lair, have the three blind mice like constantly around him, like they're his like personal guards or hmm. something. You know, still pretending to be blind. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a real <laughs> bumping into stuff and knocking over dishes and. Oh, yeah. Sorry, sir. <laughs> Damn it! Yeah. The, the, you need more set pieces, I think, for that. So we build up this whole thing with this plot going in a certain direction, and we know what the, the goal is, and there's problems in Jamaica, and and MI6 is on top of it. Well, even more than that, they, they tell Bond, don't they tell well, him we before? don't even, we, I mean, we, they we're not build there all this up before we even see Bond. They're like, they're like, get me James Bond. Actually, do we even hear, do, we don't even hear that. We just hear there's shit going down in Jamaica, and yeah. then we cut to the, the casino where a guy is there and he's looking for he's looking yeah for a guy James comes bond. in he's like right. i need to see james bond about this. and then we, and we go this... into the casino we don't see his face we see the card table a whole build and then up. we see the beautiful woman who is gambling game. and the yeah. sylvia losing, trench she's yeah. losing like crazy and we see the stud who's just like rocking her world and pissing her off and then finally we tilt up and they, and they, says, what what's is your name the, the dealer is like uh, i'm sorry what is your name again sir and he we see sean connery for the first time we see his face cigarette in the mouth yeah and we get Somebody do it. Bond. Bond. James, James Bond. Bond. Eight minutes into the film. We don't see Bond until eight minutes in. Um, a reasonable time. A reason, like, but we, we built him up quite a bit. Yeah. And so instantly, so the woman's name is Sylvia Trench. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't look up her actual name. Does anyone know? Hold on, give me a second. We don't. Um, keep this, this is what Google's for. Let's but, just so it had been a long time since I'd seen this movie, and I kind of forgot, and I, uh, I forgot a lot of things. And in watching this now, I was like, oh, this girl, Sylvia Trench, I remember that name. Like, she's going to be with us for the whole movie. And then uh, this is pretty much it. She has this and, like, one she, other scene. It, it be, and like all women, she sees James Bond. She's kind of annoyed by him. But instantly and, wants to bang him. And wants to bang him. Yeah. She, she, uh, she breaks into his house, if I'm not mistaken. She does. Yes, she does. She breaks into his apartment, which is... Played by Eunice Grayson. Gayson. Eunice Gayson. Okay. Yeah. And Eunice. she was... Quite an um, unfortunate name. Interestingly enough, so... I'm going to jump ahead just a little bit to when Bond actually goes to where he's summoned to go to M M's office. Because I think it's interesting. When I saw Money Penny greets him, and this is uh, Lois Maxwell, who will play Money Penny for like 80 20 years. plus years. 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but she, the first things, the first words out of her mouth, I was like, holy shit, Money Penny's not British. That is not a British accent. And it turns out she's not. She's Canadian, which oh. is, is funny. So, and also the guy who played Dr. No is also Canadian, which I now, thought he was Chinese. Yeah. Yeah. His <laughs> name is, his name is Joseph Wiseman, not a traditional Chinese name, uh, but he's also Canadian. And so if he's in yellow face and Money Penny's playing a British person, is she like in whiter face? That was that was what I wanted to know because it seems like she's definitely playing a British person, but is not even making an attempt at the accent. Yeah, I mean, so you, um, she's not making any attempt at the accent, but she's. So you're saying she's supposed to be a British person? I believe she's supposed to be. I, there's I, listen, we don't get into Money Penny's backstory. Maybe Does she's she Canadian. Develop I don't know. A, a more of an accent in later. Does she try harder? I don't know. We're, we're going to have to wait and see on that I one. guess so. So we maybe don't know. We'll do a, we don't know what happens. Maybe we'll do a Lois Maxwell ac accent review after every movie. Um, but I, the reason I bring it up is because it's interesting. The woman who played Sylvia Trench was originally supposed to play Money Penny, and Money Penny was supposed. Lois Maxwell was supposed to play Sylvia Trench. Thought the role was a little risque for her, and swapped parts. Wow. So, I mean, she I, probably and, made, and, what and got and locked, you want to switch? Like, yeah, and locked herself into a job for the next like 20 plus years. Yeah, <laughs> really pretty smart. Pretty good move on her part. Yeah. Um, she's so she's so likable, though, you know, mm. the one and, the one person, really you know, James like, Bond can trust yeah, even more than he trusts him, really. And, and she well, she probably knew like she probably sort of knew the part, like the typecasting there because she was like, eh, I'm not as sexy as this other guy. I'm like, you know. I'm more like the uh, the you know sweet girl that you cheat off of in high school, but yeah, you know, but still flirty because yeah, James but Bond I don't, but you know, know I don't, but you know, I don't put out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, James, the, James the, Bond has to flirt in his interactions though, mm. so she like has to play along, and he does the yeah, she, so he she does the, the hat throw thing it is every the 60s. time. Yeah, right, he does the hat throw <laughs> yeah. that becomes a thing, and like I love the whole set of like M's office and Money Penny in the like front room mm -hmm. and then like that set pretty much i think even today like they still kind of try to keep that same right even like the camera angles are like like m's desk is always like to the left we established right. that sort of tradition of how it looks and now we expect it every time <laughs> exactly so he goes into m's office he gets his briefing and i thought my favorite part of the scene was they had a really funny bit where they bring in the armorer who in the future will be come q, q but in this movie he's not played by Desmond Llewellyn. He's mm. not known as Q. He's just the armorer. But they had a really funny bit about him switching guns. Um, so he, Oh, wait, he, yeah. So what is it, the story here? I remember hearing something like, so in my mind, like the Walther PPK is, and I know this from playing Nintendo 64 Goldeneye, that that is James Bond's like gun. It's his it signature is. gun, yeah. But it's then I remember them. reading or hearing something that like in the books, it's not that gun, it's the Beretta. He has a Beretta in the books for, for a lot of the books, especially the early ones. And I think at one point, somebody who was a fan of the books, but who actually worked in espionage, like... Uh, pulled what's his name? Pulled Ian Fleming aside and was like, "By the way, people don't dig the Beretta. It's kind of a sissy gun. We use this Walter Walter PBK, and I don't know if he changed it before or after this movie, but that was definitely part of the the inspiration for it. Was like the real real life people were telling him, "This isn't what we'd really use. It's this." And so I he gotcha. wrote it into the books. And actually, I think he I believe he must have done it before the movie because I think the whole gag about Bond's Beretta jamming and him getting hurt was actually written into the books and that's why he changed the gun. So this, but I love the, the armorer comes in and like busts his balls about like, oh, it's a fine weapon for a lady's handbag. All right. <laughs> yeah. It's like such a good, um, he also says stopping power more than once. Yeah. If you know. Yeah. <laughs> I interesting sort of a side note. Does that just mean it has bigger bullets? I, I do not know. I think so. That would make sense. Right. I mean, I, the bullets are going faster out of that gun than they are out of the Beretta by a significant amount. It's got to be bigger bullets. Big, probably bigger. Is it? It's a bigger gun. I think it's, it's the not. It's not it a much like smaller gun. Size might be too, a bigger right? caliber. It's probably a bigger caliber, it's same bigger size bullets. gun. I think it's interesting though that it's it's sort of a novelty that they switched away from the Beretta since the Beretta is like the Hollywood default weapon um, for really practical reasons. Like in every like taking all these movies, they always use Berettas. And it's because the um, the slide chamber uh, is when you fire blanks, they're different shapes than regular bullets, and they also don't have as much charge in them, so they don't knock the slide as far back. And the slide chamber, the cutout for the the you know 
slide chamber that ejects the shells is much bigger on a Beretta, so they tend not to jam as much when they're firing blanks, which is why if you use another gun, you'll end up getting getting it jammed and armorers got pissed off, so whenever anyone would say, hey, bring me a gun, a prop gun we could use, they would just bring Berettas because they're just better at shooting blanks. But not in James Bond. Not good enough for them. They're using the Walther PPK. This has been the last GMs. James Bond cast before Harris kills us all <laughs> with his knowledge of guns. Come on, somebody was. He's got a gun. That. that was <laughs> that was kind of interesting. All right, yeah, moving on. Okay, so James Bond, he's got to go to Jamaica. He has to he has to have sex with Sylvia Trench first, yeah. obviously, because yeah, she broke quirky. into his house because yeah. that's appropriate. Uh, I, I would like to say that times world. were different back then, <laughs> yeah. Colin. She broke into his house, and then he was like, "No, I really got to go." And she was like, "Are you sure?" And he was like, "Oh man, I, I almost, I almost did it this time. I almost did the smart thing and just walked away." But no, <laughs> but no. well, no. She, she didn't just break into his house. She broke into his house, took off all her clothes, put on one of his shirts as her clothes, and then got out his golf clubs and his practice golf balls and started putting balls around in his apartment sexually. Yeah, like any respectable yeah. woman would do back then. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's how so else are you going to land a husband? <laughs> 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 All right, so James Bond is off to Jamaica. Anybody got anything for this before he lands at the airport? You got the plane flying and then it lands. And then we have one of my favorite parts of the movie. Our first is Steve it, McGarrett sighting. Is it Felix Leiter's glasses? It's, it is Felix Leiter's glasses. They're so stolen, good. Stolen they directly so good. From, from Liz Taylor's uh, <laughs> <laughs> dresser, I think. They were definitely not a man's glasses. But this is um, this is our first appearance of Jack Lord, who everyone knows from saying "Book 'em Dano" on Hawaii Five O, which everyone knows from having an awesome theme song. If anybody wants to sing it, no, yes, no. It's awesome. I thought I remember Jack Lord was a Felix Leiter. I forgot he was the original Felix Leiter. Does he ever play him again? No, he doesn't. And there's an interesting story behind that. But what I thought was really fascinating was when I was younger, I knew him from Hawaii Five O first, and I sort of assumed that he got this job because he was a famous TV actor. But this was many years before Hawaii Five O. Yeah. That he he was like a nobody, like he was known for like playing the cowboy of the week on Have Gun Will Travel or something. You know, he was like a guy who just played these random parts. He got this job in this huge movie that blew up and spawned a franchise. And they said a few years later, hey, you want to come back for Goldfinger? And he was like, yes, but I want to be billed as Sean Connery's co-star. I want a much bigger part. And I want way more money. And yeah. they said, you no. must be confused. <laughs> yeah, this I is think not I read the that. Felix Leiter story. <laughs> you know? And they basically said, no way. And then, so what's, what amazes me, so that's like clearly a case of a guy just totally overvaluing his contribution. And then he did it again when they asked him to be Captain Kirk in Star Trek. They asked him to take over after Jeffrey Hunter got written out after the pilot. The pilot, yeah. And they oh, yeah. said, you want to come play Captain Kirk in this great sci-fi show we're launching and blah, 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 blah. And he said, yes, but I want half. I want half the show. I want to be an executive producer. I want half the show. And Gene Roddenberry said, what? No. Yeah. yeah no, thank you. <laughs> and then what's amazing to me, this is what blows my mind more than anything, is later he gets cast in Hawaii Five-0 as an executive producer and owns half the show and it made him a millionaire. So when it they cast him that, he did it again and they were like, yes, yes, have half the show. You're a co-creator I knew now. my greed would come through <laughs> yeah, one of these but times. I mean, you, you can't even hate on the guy. That's like insane. That's like, that's like, you know, turning down these great jobs and then just, and then eventually somebody's like, the right one will come along. <laughs> this guy's got just enormous balls. Let's just give him <laughs> all the money. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the size of those testicles. Jack Lord, you win. <laughs> That's great. I didn't know any of that. Just blows my mind. Um, yeah. The but airport scene, that's a good scene. Uh, you get James Bond. He walks up to some guy. Some guy's like, you know, I'm your ride. He's like, he's instantly, I need to go to the phone. Right. <laughs> the bad guy, the guy who says I'm your ride instantly is like, I'm your ride. <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm your ride and, and, and other normal things that your ride would say <laughs> Yeah, exactly He kind of gives it away uh, there, There's another instance of that later on in this movie From right. another character that I'll James mention. Bond is not fooled for a second He immediately Goes to a Confirms phone. that this guy is not his ride And then he hops in the car with the yeah, dude Gets in anyways Because he's He's, he's he got a gun to, He wants to get that You know what the thing is James Bond realizes This guy is an asset And he needs to find a way to interrogate this dude so they speed off in the car. They have a brief car chase. They're alone. 
He turns the tables on this unsuspecting dude, pulls a gun on him. He judo flips him like a dozen times, which props to these actors because they really commit to these Bond judo flips. Like, yeah. he barely touches their wrists, and they go flying. Yeah. Just like real life. Harris. Just like real life. Uh, and then, uh, I really, yeah, uh, I, I really think that's one of the great overall James Bond things. There's always someone trying to kill him. He always knows it, and there's usually a trap, and he usually just goes for it anyways. Oh, I thought you now, were going to mention judo chops because there's <laughs> plenty I mean, of his those. judo is now. I got a spice spy school question number one here. Uh, you've captured an enemy agent. You want to take him in for interrogation. Do you a tie him up and throw him in the trunk of your car? B question him immediately just in case he escapes. Or C give him his pack of cigarettes, then get get distracted for a little while <laughs> while he bites into a hidden cyanide capsule. James Bond sucks at his job. Yeah, he's okay, not great. You don't understand the way it was to smoke cigarettes in the '60s. It's just like it's everyone a, does it all the time. It's, it's like the only thing. Like there, I was like, oh, I need a cigarette before before you can interrogate me. I really need a cigarette that I don't have anything hidden in. You can be a cold blooded murderer, but yeah. like you gotta give the still man a, give the give man, the man, a, man cigarette. a cigarette. What am I, I, I do feel like yeah. I do feel like '50s and '60s cigarettes were like totally integrated into etiquette overall. It's like there's a bunch of things you have to do to be polite, and then like a lot of them have like a subsection about cigarettes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. And this is, is one true. of them. <laughs> yes. Even even when capturing an enemy agent, mm-hmm. you owe him those cigarettes, which is why like later on when they're like cyanide caps on a cigarette, eh? Brilliant. It was like it was like yeah. almost like unthinkable that <laughs> yeah. he, he broke the sacred vow of the the, the, the you know sacredness of the yeah. cigarette smoking. These were better times. What can I say? Mm-hmm. Make, make I mean, America great again, right? Yeah. <laughs> so Bond gets to the hotel, and and of course the the concierge is a pretty girl who is eye fucking him, as even the men in this movie kind of eye fuck him as he walks by. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, yeah. So, so let's pick up the pace a little. We're running out of time here, but uh, so this plot, he goes to the hotel. Uh, he immediately finds He's out doing an investigation. Blah blah blah. They lead him to the boats. Anybody got anything on the invest? He interviews his buddy. Yeah, he but- finds the bridge club people. They they're like he just likes bridge and fishing. And he's like, okay, the fishing guy is obviously important because he's taking him out on a boat for long hours. He goes to find the fishing guy. It's a guy named Quarrel. And um, and he get my absolute favorite line in the movie. I'm a friend of Commander Strangways. Ain't that nice? I like people who's friends with people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is a great a line. Big middle figure. I, love, I like. <laughs> I love Quarrel. I thought he was a great sidekick. Yeah, yeah. I too. totally enjoy everything about this movie as long as Quarrel does okay in the end. I love I mean, his use of red T-shirts. Does. Yeah, really it's great. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. Like very vividly yeah. bright, right? especially when they're like sneaking around. Yeah. He's got the bright. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, so he Quarrel doesn't want to like know him but he's like he follows quarrel quarrel goes to the bar they corner him and then felix Leiter shows up and actually says but not before not before some more judo flips yeah ju- really oh, the judo of judo course flips. yeah they you know they've got him two on one but then you know they're they're not james bond and he's got the judo mm-hmm. but then felix Leiter has been lurking the whole time and we've seen him lurking the glasses he comes in with a gun holds the gun on him. Then they're like immediately like, oh, you're with CIA. We're all like super bro now. Mm-hmm. And then they go hang out and like start talking. And then Quirrell gets stabbed in the face by a light bulb and doesn't even like flinch. Yeah, there's a weird photographer woman following them. She oh yeah, they never picture. kind of followed up on that either. Yeah, she, she just, just like she shows works, up and then vanishes. She works for uh, she works for Dr. No. Then or he she goes for the newspaper. I don't think we ever established if she was telling the truth or not. It's clear she's fucking suspicious, but yeah, you know, they just it's a plot line that just gets totally. Side dropped. note: Did you guys happen to catch the name of Quarles' uh, buddy? Like the, I think he was a chef at yeah, the I, bar uh, or the uh, restaurant. P- p- puss. It's puss yeah, feller. It's puss feller. Puss feller. Puss feller. First name puss. <laughs> last name feller. Yeah. Is it feller or filler? Feller. I had feller. Okay. I had the uh, yeah. subtitles yeah. on. Well. That is something. That All is the names something. are good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, that's let's... again, that's a great trend of James yes. Bond movies uh, for both the women. Is that even? And... I'm, I don't even feel like that's a double entendre. That's just a regular old entendre. They probably that's asked the guy like, "What's your entendre. name?" And he's like, "Puss Feller," and they're like, yeah, "We're using it. That's yeah. great." <laughs> well, <laughs> we just started a thing that we're gonna have to do in every movie now. He's like, uh, he's technically like a, a night nightclub owner, kind of, or a restaurant owner. You know, he's got it's. Yeah, let's go on down to Puss Fellers. You know, yeah. There's, we, you know it's going to be a rocking good time. That's probably the name of the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, too. yeah. 
So then we get to uh, what is it? the the next thing I've got that I thought was cool was the rock doctor goes. Bond is suspicious of the Do you geologist. Mean a geologist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I that call him the rock doctor. <laughs> yeah, that guy's performance as like uh, obviously lying was. <laughs> like pretty yes. spot on he was the king of not lying that's well. that's one of those things where you're watching it and you want to just be like bond you just, just like take him down you know like <laughs> he's lying how could you not see through this yeah. man but he but he gets he goes so he goes to crab cake island where dr no lives and basically yeah. bond has figured out that dr no lives on crab cake island and he gets sequestered in this weird little room and dr no talks to him through an intercom i thought it was like legit like a creepy effective scene that was a great scene I, it was a great all first, the all the, the interiors no. all the interiors of Dr. No's lair are like really, really good. Mm -hmm. Like except one of the best parts of part. the movie. There's one part. Uh, well, except for like the tunnels he crawls through. That's exactly. stupid. Yeah. 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 So stupid. I actually have something on that. There was the uh, production design for Dr. No's lair uh, was Ken Adams who did the PD for this. And this gag actually, uh, or this gig got him the uh, job doing Dr. Strangelove for Kubrick. Oh, does so. he do other? Is he like I know for a few James Bond movies in the Roger Moore era, they had like consistently the same production designer, and he was kind of the guy who would make the big like elaborate villain sets. And I know this movie has a, a, a an elaborate set, but it's not quite like as big and. Well, they had yeah, they had a bigger but I forgot what his budget was, but it was ridiculous. It was like it was like you know tiny it was a pittance but did this so, guy ever do another james bond movie? i don't know if he did another james bond one i know he got dr strange love which is much better than any james bond movie so he pretty much hit it out of the park he pr i'm sure he did other james bond movies yeah. or other cool shit um those interiors are really cool they look like um i mean i hate to say it but they they have like this vague resemblance to like urban outfitters stuff from today maybe ken adams in what the, way? Oh, do you mean like the fitters. look? Like the look yeah, of the, the layer? Yeah, the look. Like, You're um, talking about how everything is like Some copper? of the color palette and some of the um, like the shapes and stuff. Are that you like saying that Urban Outfitters is really a Bond villain layer? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, yes. like that's what they want. You know, like basically like if you're, you know, a young woman in the city, like <laughs> what you want is to buy things that will vaguely remind you that you could you know be in a bond film you know have some kind of nuclear base that destroys missiles and demand Topples them mm. demand so, a million yes. dollars yeah <laughs> absolutely so it's your um, main concern in life <laughs> so what i wanted to mention earlier was that like when bond is brief before he even goes to jamaica they straight up tell him like oh there's a suspicious guy there or like the americans think that there's this guy trying to topple which is a term that means something uh, yeah. Topple missiles uh, from being in Jamaica. They're close to. Uh, mm. Oh, yeah, and the Americans have a uh, uh, space shuttle launch. Space shuttle launch, on. yeah. So Cape yeah. Canaveral, right? Yeah. Yep. And yep. so he wants to, like, fuck with that. Um, so it's they, a Mercury mm -hmm. probe or uh, orbital. Yeah, so they pretty much, like, spell out the whole entire plot right there. You mm -hmm. know, there's no mystery. We already know what the, the bad guy's Doctor up to. Doctor knows a bad guy. Yeah. Just gotta find him and <laughs> yeah, out what we know what he's trying to do. Yeah. yeah, so I thought that was an But Doctor knows his plans of his own. And he gives the uh, rock doctor a what for? tarantula. tarantula. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So like, so plan A was to ambush and shoot Bond with silent pistols, which worked great on Strangways. And the three blind mice get foiled in their one attempt where they're trying to shoot him from like across the street, and they get blinded by headlights. Oh man! And then they were like, "Oh, we're done." And it's like, okay, plan plan A is out the window. Plan B is to throw a spider in his bed. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's like a pro progression of weapons. Like you have to get through like guns and explosives and knives and stuff before you get to throwing animals at people as the most effective means of murdering them. Uh, I think he's you know just trying to eliminate him quietly. I guess maybe. Then Side he, note: well, then, then he they you know they have the woman and she is gonna lure him into having sex and then keep him there. Well, right. Also, know, a terrible, terrible. Miss <laughs> Taro, work. are yeah. you referring to Miss yeah. Taro? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sweet Asian <laughs> actress, mm -hmm. Miss yep. Taro. Yeah. Um, let's talk about this movie's use of yellow face, <laughs> and oh. how there are no Asian actors in this movie, but uh, heavily the 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 nurses at uh, like some of Doctor No's henchmen are actual Asians. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Wow. They, two Asian then the nurses the have layer. actual they're Asians with actual lines so yeah. pretty impressive so that's like real some I'm sure real, they were not paid yeah, <laughs> that, yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> that's some real woke work by the uh, by the bond producers there um, yeah the uh, the the doc, uh, like they were deported instantly in, in, in fairness in fairness much like uh, Emma Stone's character in that 
terrible movie where she was in yellow face. Dr. La La only Dr. <laughs> Dr. No is only half Asian. No? Dr. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, instead of a, a German German and Chinese yeah, heritage. German Dr. And, no. and Chinese, yeah. Oh. But um okay, so where are we what are we doing here? So I, I did Let's just get to the end. So what happens? So Bond goes to the island with Quarrel, um, who has probably one of the best deaths. Uh, okay, oh, let's talk about that beat real fast. So no one wants to go to this crab cake island where Dr. No lives because there's supposedly um, there's a dragon that lives on the island that everyone is deathly afraid of. The locals of. are afraid of the dragon that lives on Crab Key. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I said Crab Cake Island because I thought I'm, that's what you said earlier. I, know, I believe I I've been, been saying it all great. along. Okay, I awesome. think it makes more sense. I like it. I'm and sorry. They're delicious. Anyway, um... So everyone's afraid of this dragon. They finally get to the island. Quirrell gets drunk to get there. Right. Oh, and right. a drunk Quirrell is the best Quirrell. And I was like, Quirrell, don't ever change. I hope you live, <laughs> I hope you live forever into, many, into retirement and you and James Bond go on many, many long adventures together, as I'm sure you will. Yes. Because why would you kill off your only minority character with a huge... Because you're wearing a bright red shirt and they definitely won't see you. <laughs> yeah, no, you'll be fine, Quirrell. So they get to the island, the two of them, and they instantly meet uh, the first like real Bond girl. Um, Honey Rider is her name, right? She mm-hmm. comes out Honey of the Rider. water. Played uh, by Ursula Andress. I know this is like heresy, but I was like, Ursula Andress, shrug. I mean, I know it's like an iconic moment in the film, I feel you. I feel you. I wasn't. Uh, she doesn't. She, doesn't she do can't it act. Me. Yeah. And like, and like, what is her character even? She's like a, a shell collector. A shell collector whose dad was killed by Doctor No, but she's not there for revenge. She's just there to like chill. And she's no one is allowed on the island. Shells there. She ends up tagging along in the secret mission for what the fuck knows what reason. I like how like they they make it a point to say that no one goes to the island during the daytime because you, they'll know you're there. They'll find you. They'll kill you. Except for this half naked girl. Except for this half naked girl. And her excuse is that she's done it so many times and escaped that now they don't even bother with her. Did yeah. you catch that? <laughs> she's just collecting shells. Yeah, she's and just the, the like, best shells are there. Not like she's ever been shot with a machine gun or roasted alive. She can get fifty dollars. <laughs> Per shell, yeah. Which back then was like in sixty money. That's like a hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. A lot of, ten lot of thousand. Money. Yeah, <laughs> or a million dollars. She's a millionaire shell collector. Oh, also the other thing I noticed in this beach scene is I don't ever remember in any of the other Bond films after this Connery's tattoo being as visible as it was in these beach scenes. Mm. Like oh, they, right. they have like they're, they're like his forearm. He has got got this enormous tattoo, and it is slathered in concealer. And it is not covering anything up. It is like, you know, his white his arm is like white with concealer and the blue tattoo is just showing right through it. It's amazing. Wow, I have to check that out. I totally missed that. All right. Um, um, so I got spike, my spy school question number two. So you've just learned that a legendary dragon is guarding the supervillain's secret lair, but it's actually just a heavy, heavily armored tank with a flamethrower. Do you, A... Just be grateful it isn't an actual fucking dragon and avoid it anyways because it's still a dangerous killing machine. B, come up with a plan to disable the vehicle using the element of surprise and exploit its weaknesses. Or C, shoot at it with, shoot at it with pistols from the cover of hastily <laughs> production-designed bushes. <laughs> like, Bond has fucking blown it again. It is not a good... This isn't a good plan at all. Wouldn't you just... I mean, there's three of you... Arguably, too, if you if the if uh, you know Honey Rider, you wanted to hang back. Yeah, she's bringing a gun to a, a flamethrower fight at this. Could one to guy go fight. around one way and another guy go around the other way? The and thing didn't seem terribly mobile. No, it seemed like I mean it, it seemed like you could just run and avoid it. The yeah. flamethrower only had a range of about Let's ten feet. Let's describe it for people, the three people listening to this okay. show. Who it's are clearly us. not of any kind of animal nature. It's clearly an automobile <laughs> inside of a metal box. And with a has, painted dragon face yeah, they on put it, some teeth that looks on like it's yeah. having some real trouble in the mud. <laughs> yeah. It's really moving. I mean, it's, it tops out at about three and a half miles an hour. But it does shoot some Obviously. badass flames out of the. It has like yes, a mouth. It does. Yeah, and it's got a range of maybe fifteen feet with that flamethrower, which a, a small child could easily outrun. And or yeah, not, or you could sidestep. Yeah. But poor but Quarrel. Poor Quarrel was frozen in fear as they as they shoot Quarrel. their as they use shoot their pistols at at a uh, you know a armored vehicle. I will say, like Quarrel's character, it was it was known quite early that he has an irrational fear of this dragon, and even upon seeing it and realizing that it is not a real dragon, his fear still still yeah. overtook he, him. He's still he afraid of it run. like it's a mythical dragon when it 
is painfully obvious that it is not anything more than an automobile inside of a box. And for that, he was barbecued. And hopefully all that rum that he was drinking helped him to go up a little faster, made the death a little less painful. That sneeze you may have heard is a good point for me to to mention. Uh, we're, we're here with one other person, our lovely producer slash engineer slash just all around bearded man, Chris. Say hi, yeah. Chris. Hey, I've just been creeping for 45 minutes. <laughs> Thanks for the intro. This is what we like to do when we have guests. Uh, we wait 45 minutes to introduce them. Uh, are, are we already 45 minutes? In so, Jesus. Bond got eight minutes. I got 45 minutes. Does that make me cooler? Or is that... <laughs> that is pretty yeah. cool. The buildup has been wait, something. You, but you're, you're still not as built up as Dr. No. He still hasn't appeared yet. <laughs> That's true. All right, let's get, let's get to that. Uh, Chris, you didn't watch this movie, did you? Hell no. <laughs> have you ever seen it? No. All right. All right. Well, you missed a very risque de- decontamination scene where James Bond and Ursula Andress. I think they have some kind of pasties through. on her boobs at some point. I do there. believe they oh, did. They I, did. D- I did pause that <laughs> just to make sure. I was like, we all I think did. I saw titty, and, and it turns out I didn't. Yeah, I thought <laughs> I saw actual bush. Uh, I was very concerned. <laughs> Oh, I, I do think this is one place where the movie fails is the length of time from when they go to Crab Key to when they're actually captured and meet Dr. No is really quite long. Yeah, it's there's exhausting. a whole thing where they're like trudging through the swamp, literally trudging like the movie's not just trudging. They're trudging on screen and then they hide under the water with reeds while other people trudge around on screen that we have no like emotional attachment to. Yeah, they're dragging it out. And it was, I mean, it was short by for James Bond movie terms, but it's still... I was surprised, honestly. Because it, 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 it felt longer because of sections like that. I thought it was also interesting that, like, we don't meet, like, the... We don't meet Ursula Andress until way late in the movie. And then we don't even meet, meet the, villain the villain until... until even yeah. later, which is kind of amazing. So um, let's get to the villain. So they finally get captured... After oh, Quarrel dies. And then they're given they're they're decontaminated and given clothing and they're by actual Asians playing Asians, um, who say that they didn't get their measurements until just the day before. And my question is, they were expecting Bond, maybe Bond and Jack Lord, maybe Bond and Quarrel. Ursula Andrews just showed up like Honey Rider was a last minute addition, and yet they still have a room for her and an outfit. And what if Coral hadn't been burned alive by the dragon? Did they have like a third room there adjacent to them? Or I would say probably. All I can say is Dr. No is a megalomaniac mastermind and he foresaw that she was going to be there. He knew there was a shell collecting hottie like walking around the island and eventually she would meet James Bond and things would happen. You know? And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I wouldn't put it past uh, any of the characters in the film to like you know, immediately try to like establish a woman's measurements on site. Right. That that seems That's, to be a that lot seems of seems to be another like here. kind of sixties yeah. mm-hmm. like Yeah. They, I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them to just ask her. <laughs> just like, hey that's the, their I mean, up. now, now, hey, what are your measurements? Now we don't, we don't even do measurements now. You know, it's like no. you get small, medium, large, extra large. <laughs> are you talking Super about size. women or outfits? I, I, All of them. But uh, no, 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 no. I mean, like I wouldn't reduce a woman to, you know, whatever letter corresponds to the clothes that she wears. But absolutely. We don't use like, you know, the chest size in inches. I mean, quite. Well, as maybe often. they do when they're buying. Bra- I mean, I got, I got to be honest, I don't, and this is probably because I'm an odd size, but I, I can't, actually can't buy small, medium, large, ex- I, you know, all my clothes have real sizes in them. We yeah. get it. You have a huge penis. <laughs> <laughs> all my pants have to be one leg a lot bigger than the other one. It's really, it's really inconvenient. It's a problem that only James Bond understands. Um, <laughs> speaking of James right, Bond. Right, we get you, you buy three-legged pants. We get it. We got Speaking it. of James Bond, um, the supervillain who's been trying to kill you all movie finally captures you. The title be- character. But he's being weirdly <laughs> hospitable, and he offers you clean clothes and comfortable rooms at breakfast. Do you tell him to go to hell and take his breakfast with him? <laughs> do you play along but keep your guard up? Or do you relax and have breakfast and get poisoned and go unconscious? I love that, that he, they, they drink coffee, and they got... They get poisoned. They both pass out, and you think, "Oh man, they're gonna wake up. They're gonna be chained up. They're gonna have some crazy like uh, gun pointed it's at them." It's not gonna look like a hotel. <laughs> they just wake up. And in no, in bed. fact, in fact, before they wake up, Doctor No comes in and tucks Bond in, <laughs> <laughs> like comes in and, and just creeps on him with his and weird hands. The metal yeah, hands. Yeah, the metal there you hands go. And tucks him into bed. Oh my god, you couldn't make this shit sweet up. Sweet dreams, Good night, Mr. Sweet Bond. Friend. Literally, I hope you have sweet <laughs> dreams. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it was like the, he he was like he felt rude turning down the free breakfast. He was like, "Oh, that would you know, it's like an English thing." He's like, "Well, he made this coffee. I know it's probably poisoned, but 
I'll even, drink it anyways. Yeah, he even kind of says that. And she's like, how can you eat breakfast at a time like this? Like, I'm hungry, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry, I'm hungry damn it. <laughs> and I think there might be drugs in this. <laughs> I actually I actually really love his reaction when he finds out that the coffee's poison because she, like, goes under hard first, and he's, like, still fine. And then immediately upon realizing that he's about to pass out, he throws the coffee cup in the crowd. <laughs> falls in, like, it. the most awkward, like, his arm is, like, up on the table. Yeah. Yeah, Terrible. they did one take. He's like, do you want me to do it again? They're like, no, nope, we're good. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. I think I should throw the cup on the ground. I'm mad. I didn't I'm smash mad. it enough. <laughs> did you see my tattoo? Get me another cup. I've got to <laughs> smash one. So, okay, so they wake up, but they're actually taken to Dr. No's lair where they see a giant window. And I thought this was really interesting. So they had these fish in this big, like, they had this, Dr. No apparently has this massive underground aquarium with these giant fish in it. And, um... They see these fish, and they're marveling at them. And Dr. No explains that the glass is super thick, which is why the fish are really smaller, but they look huge because the glass like makes them look bigger. I think I read that that was green screen. And well, it, it was. It's, yeah. well, they didn't I, have green screen um, back yeah, then. Yeah, no, they didn't have or green screen, but it was, uh, what do you projector? call it? The, yeah, projector. Yeah, yeah, back projector, rear projected. Mm -hmm. But they didn't, they didn't have that footage until the day they shot. And they were just grabbing like random, they were just like, we need underwater random stock footage. And the guy brought it back. And it and was they were like too big. They were too. They were like it was like close-ups of minnows, and so they actually so that line about minnows pretending to be whales, which I thought was a really clever line, must have been added on the day because they didn't know they were going to have to do this whole sh shtick with the fish looking big until that day. Which I think like kudos to whatever producer or writer Whatever's was on set. Twelve writers that, yeah, they had yeah, on exactly. this movie. Whichever they like, yeah. writer they were like, holy shit, we're fucked. Do something. <laughs> uh, minnows, well. <laughs> yeah, to like to like turn that into a memorable line. Well, what is, is the impressive. line? What is the line? It's um, he or set it, it up. Bond sees these fish and they're they're marveling at these like huge fish that are there and how they they look so big and. But Dr. he explains Dr. that they're no not really that big. Explains yeah. that it's just the thickness of the glass makes them look big. And Bond says, "Oh, minnows pretending to be whales is kind of like you on this island." Like you on this island. Like you on this island. Yeah. And he replied with, fuck you, Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> he brought, brought, yeah, he so replied I with. Think he, uh, doesn't he respond with silence and like just yeah. that look? Like, <laughs> Yeah, he's just like, look at my metal hands. I'll crush you. Like, but I am won't. Chinese. How he dare won't. you speak to me? He looks at him like he's, yeah. uh, he's eating a, one of those Warheads candies. He's got that like sour face. Yeah. And then they go to dinner. Yeah. And Bond makes a really futile attempt to escape when they drag Honey Rider off to be a, I a, assume i think it was the implication was that she was going to be raped by his henchman oh which by the like, way she she admits that her backstory is she was once raped and then killed the rapist by putting a black widow into his bed mm -hmm. yeah right. so to and which I, bond responds with um i wouldn't make a habit out of it or something like yeah that. yeah he's like don't <laughs> don't weird. kill all your rapists that way because i have personal encounters with that and spiders are fucking terrifying <laughs> i fully expected him to say a comment that would like relate to that spider experience that just happened to him yeah yeah no but no like or, or at least if be that like, were me i'd be like are you fucking kidding me i just had that happen to <laughs> you <laughs> no yeah that is so weird see that's and why it, you're not a spy for the british government i would actually be really suspicious gotta, over that i'd be like wait you kill people with spiders people have been trying to kill me with with spiders or at That's, least wouldn't you suspect that maybe she was the one exactly, who did it exactly exactly yeah. or no, if you were a screenwriter working on this wouldn't you write that part out if it was a gag that you already used in a different scene yeah i, I see but james bond like he has a sense about women if, he's, if he comes sense? into physical contact with a woman he knows if she's like the good guy or the bad guy and, he, and unless she, she's like you know a, really a skillful and, betrayer yeah and then, like, it's the most heartbreaking thing ever. You know? He feels bad when he has to kill them. Yeah. I forgot to mention the Miss Taro character. It was, like, this other girl. Um, I forget kind of who she was or how he, like, came to She's like her. a henchman side. Oh, she works at the she, embassy. Yeah. She works at she the... She was a spy yeah. in, in the yeah, British she was a, yeah. government. Right. Double agent. Yeah, he double He comes agent. over. He, like, asks her out, right? Yeah. And he says, like, I'm going to pick you up. What about 3 o'clock, right? Is yeah. that her? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he goes to her place, and then, you know, the camera gets there before Bond does, and she's on the phone, and she's like, yeah, we'll get him tonight or whatever. So it's clear that she's bad. And then Bond enters the room, and she instantly is like, yeah, we'll get him tonight. Oh, I have to go well, now. That's, well, that's remember, that was because they tried to kill him on the way in the lamest car chase ever, with which is like an old hearse uh, versus some kind of stupid, you right. know, hoopty that, that Bond is driving on this, on this road. And then they fail to kill him in the car. This was the three blind mice meet their death in the hearse, presumably, only because we never see them again. And then she's surprised when he actually shows up for their date. But he's totally onto her. He lets her make the phone call. And then he lets her try to distract him with sex, which right. I know he's the hero and everything. 
but in the modern world, it wasn't. That was sort of like. I know she's a bad guy, but he does deceive her and bones her. Like, you know, it's sort of... Uh, uh, no, that's it, his plan. He it, knows she's yeah, bad. I guess you could say it, it, she got his, what was <laughs> coming to her. <laughs> no, like, that's the... Like, James Bond, his strategy is, I know you're bad, but until you are willing to tell me you're bad, I'm just going to do you. I'm, I'm just going to treat you, yeah. you like you're good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right, back to the so, ending. We gotta okay. wrap this up. Back to the ending. So they're at they're at the table, and my my favorite burn of the entire thing is when like, uh, what's his name, Doctor No says, "Oh, I was gonna try to recruit you because I thought you were like one of us, but you're just a stupid policeman," which is a sick burn to lay on a secret agent because I can guarantee you, secret agents do not like being called stupid policemen. Yeah, I oh, mean, he's also being called doing, stupid. It's hurtful. Yeah, he's also doing like underhanded jabs about the metal hands while they're at dinner. You right. know, having a nice dinner using utensils, and he's got the metal hands, and he's yeah. like kind of impressed by the fact that it's happening, but still trying to like mess with them. All right, so they put Sean Connery in a cell. They drag him away. They stick him in a cell. He they easily let him, escapes. They let him keep his sneakers, which like I'm not sure how many people they put in those cells, but maybe that's something that you figure out over time. That like <laughs> it's a trial and error thing. Is like take the oh, sneakers next, next time. Next time we like, yeah, don't give them their sneakers. <laughs> he escapes. He almost gets drowned in a tube. I want Connery's toupee guy for when I need it at some point because that toupee, spot on. I'm pretty sure that wasn't Connery. There's a part where he, you see him drop from the, from the what do you call it, duct that he's in or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like... But we see can, some... Yeah, we I, see saw, some I saw good a stunt double at some point. Not yeah. that point, but we but see some good close-ups of that toupee flopping around in the water and it looks pretty solid. I don't know. I know they got a lot of people working on that well, thing, but it looks How famous solid. was Sean Connery at this point? Uh, not very. He was really? discovered for this, I think. Well, really? Kind of. He had been in. He had been in some. He was in Darby O'Gill and the Little People, which is, I think, where they saw him. and yeah. Had him run for read for this, but he'd been in some movies. But this was by far like this was, this was like stratospheric as opposed to just like he was a, a lead in a Disney movie once, you know. Right. Um, but yeah, he'd been bald for a while, and you know, solid, solid. It rock. looks like real hair. Yeah. Um, I think this is another. Uh, I think this is another one of the movie's failures. The time from like the end of the dinner until like the confrontation in the reactor room, him crawling through the tunnels. It's it's so boring. So Ambushing boring. the guards, <laughs> yeah. stealing the outfit. By the way, just a sort of a lame conclusion to this thing. Like he just dresses up in a hazmat suit. Sort of. Yeah. He, he doesn't even go right for like man of action stuff. He sort of dupes or derps around in the background for like five minutes. I love where they're like. Where's Chang? And then they're like, right Chang, there. Get over there. Like, Chang. Chang's, Chang's a six foot four Chang, one, right? Standing over there. <laughs> Chang, Chang. And he's, yeah. like, he's as close as we are to each other. And he can't yeah. see through that, like, yeah, little he's got like a, a yeah, recognized Sean Connery's, in his Sean Connery's face. giant eyebrows through that, through that <laughs> mask. No. Chang, um, what are you doing over here? <laughs> Sorry, sir. It's me, Chang. <laughs> I'll get back to work now. <laughs> Shaggy yeah. sound different, but that's not so important right now. Never wait, mind that. He waits until they're all watching this uh, space shuttle launch. And everyone's turned around watching TV, and he just presses a button yep. that's like reactor explode button, yeah. overloads the thing, and that's how he foils the plot. Like, that, uh, Dr. No himself comes to do battle with him on the, like, with his, riser. With his ferocious metal hands, which we've seen crush something, some little yeah, trinket. Yeah, what was yeah, that thing? A <laughs> like, trinket, yeah. yeah that's something made out of, like, aluminum. He, he cr statuette. basically crushed a beer can with that hand. That hand. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Damn. So we've seen how vicious it is, and yet when he's fighting Bond, A, he can't knock him out despite clocking him in the head and hitting him in the hand. With he just slowly gets lowered down on a platform that dips into the nuclear water. Well, he and can't Bond, climb out because the hands right. don't have um, his his threat stickiness. was his own he undoing. He clamped yeah. on to Bond's leg though, and he doesn't even he fails to even do that. It was his, so. I mean, this has to be the villain with the least amount of screen time. Yeah, He's, it was a lame villain, lame ending. Yeah, I yeah. still like the villain. Um, I like his little speech. Did he have any I think good the metal lines? Hands look cool. Uh, he, he had the stupid policeman thing. He, he did the, have the. Was... So the trope that they continue is that the villain always has some sort of like uh, impairment, you know, some mm -hmm. physical. Yeah. Or and then sometimes it's the henchman. They're not perfect like Bond is. Right. Exactly. I do like in their conversation. He establishes that he like came from nothing in China, went all the way to the top of the Chinese crime syndicate, and then, then stole all their him. money and got away. <laughs> yeah. And then. Um, Bond says, oh, well, you're clearly good at what you do. I'm sure you could, like, find a job in the West. Um, yeah. yeah, why, sure why, why they don't want me there? Uh, you could find a job with, like, real people. <laughs> yeah. he, I think he even asked him. He's like, why be a criminal? He's like, yeah. you're, you're really good at what you do. Yeah, it's more fun. <laughs> yeah, and so, he's like, they don't want me. So then the He mentioned Spectre, the organization yeah. that we'll yeah. come to see again. 
So then, okay, so then the Bond has foiled his plan. No is dead. The base is exploding. Bond, one of my other favorite moments is Bond runs out. He's looking for Honey Rider. He, he grabs a, a random guy in a hazmat suit. And he's like, tell me where the girl is. And the guy's like, I don't know. And he's just like, eat fist. And just, <laughs> like, there's no reason for him to, to hit the guy. But he's just like, fuck you, punches the guy in the face. He, is, he rescues the girl. And despite the fact that he's been running all over the place to rescue this girl, and this base is exploding, and, and like hundreds of people are evacuating and running like maniacs and diving off piers and shit for some reason he's the first guy to think oh you know what motorboat i'm gonna take the motorboat right. Right. <laughs> everyone else is just like and i'm then, swimming ah, for it and yeah. also we've seen <laughs> like panic. we've seen like in between like 20 and 75 people in this operation and then it gets to like once chaos breaks out it's hundreds. like are there hundreds, it's, it's hundreds. <laughs> yeah. yes yeah. Yeah. it's a fake bauxite mine which yeah. how many people does it take to run a bauxite mine how many people does it take to run a nuclear reactor that mm. topples missiles what is bauxite what is a what nuclear is reactor? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's some sick miniatures, though. Yeah, you yeah. see the miniature yeah. when it exploded. Beautiful. Yeah. So um, then they get in the boat, and then um, and then we have Jack Lord come back to make some quip. He's got a real attitude too. He was giving Bond some real shit when he showed up late to go to the Crab Cake Island, and at the end he's giving him some shit. This is a Felix Leiter that it was a little combative. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean. You know. And he was still wearing his stunner shades. It's the sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm wearing women's sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> I told the wardrobe lady. <laughs> uh, and so then the movie ends uh, in possibly uh, a way that maybe future films will end, where Bond is left on a boat banging him broad. Yep. Right? right. And, <laughs> and they try to save him. They, they're like, okay, we're towing you in now. And he's like, let's go to the tow rope because... Why not? Yeah. They're going to get like a few more minutes. I mean... Really, like they're gonna like what, like kind of grind a little bit and bone, make out for like they're gonna bone right in front of those approximately Marines. like seven more Here's minutes like, until they I'm gonna turn show the these boat Americans back around and they're like, what? why'd you do that? <laughs> yeah, uh, because so, we weren't done, and I'm still not done as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> if, if this is four hours, I'm supposed to call somebody. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't sign up for this. Like, this is not what I signed up to the Coast Guard for. And then it ends as all Bond movies end. With credits, with and like a lot of full bond, clothes on of sex. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just stick it through the hole. <laughs> they start to kiss. They have full. They're fully clothed, and then it sort of fades to uh, yeah. let you know that the, the passage of time is happening. And then when we see them again, full clothes on. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. I I just I always like to think that like Bond was like really good at like still, dry humping. Yes. <laughs> like, still still accessing both his partners and his own pleasure centers while fully clothed. Yeah, he's like Sting. <laughs> it's like, yeah, sometimes yeah. they don't even they're not even touching. It's yeah. like eight hours, <laughs> but they don't even touch each other. They just sort of. Can look. you feel that through your brazier? <laughs> I'm tweaking your nipples. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> all right, how are we gonna rate this movie? Uh, well, uh, here's how we want to do it. This little segment is called "License to Watch." Does this yeah. movie? We want to let people know. <laughs> can we, can we keep that working? <laughs> yeah. Okay. License. So we want right. to. We want to let people know if this movie is, or if people should be licensed to to watch this movie, uh, aka like, is it worth your time? Uh, do you think this is a good, solid entry into the what w will inevitably inevitably become a twenty five movie long series? I give it like uh, two and a half Conneries. <laughs> oh, well, wait, we, we don't go that far. We're not, we're not yeah. rating it yet. No, we have I another think, system I, for I that. Think, yeah, yeah. This I is just the, yay or nay. God, I don't know all the could words. You tell, could you authorize someone to watch this? I would permit somebody to watch this movie, so, yes. I think it has its flaws as a Bond movie. I, th I think I, License I, to Watch if you it. take your own intermissions. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, I think for the length of this movie, it moves pretty briskly i would say there are the there's some parts that we mentioned yeah, are pretty parts. slow that drag yeah but for the most part there's interesting characters uh the plot's pretty easy to understand and to you know follow i think if you get on. caught playing candy crush at a couple of moments you're not going to be too upset with yourself it's all right you don't have to be like focused totally on yeah. the movie but it's 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 solid you run to the kitchen you mix some pretzels yeah, you don't need to pause it to go get else. a beer yeah exactly. and this brings us exactly. to another factor which is like the corniness level of these movies like uh you know some of them get a little eye-rollingly bad at points. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I feel like this one stands the test of time. It's it's fine. you know. It's, I, agree. I agree. There were no really corny moments. The music choices, I thought, were at points maybe the corniest thing that happens. And that's just, I think, a, either a taste level. like They were or, trying to sell soundtracks, I think. <laughs> I don't know. Possibly. I mean, like, or, like, I, I don't know. One thought I had was in the beginning when they were playing, like, the uh, 
I don't know what you would call it. Like um, Calypso three blind mice. Calypso three blind mice. Yeah, like that was a little. Uh, yeah. I and didn't little, understand the point. And a little on the nose, considering yeah. there were three. I blind just, guys I just, there. I hate the dragon, the the automobile dragon thing. It's just so dumb. Like it looks. Yeah, that was pretty. It's corny definitely, too. you could see that a lot of the stunts and like the car chase was kind of weak, and the and the and honestly, the Doctor No sets, as awesome as they were in terms of their design, they didn't look like they were really high quality. You know, like they were definitely not they weren't breaking the budget on any of this shit yeah. which is i think the biggest thing when about it kicks was kicks out the duck like the uh, what do you call it the electrified um, yeah yeah the great yeah the great yeah oh my god it comes off so easily yeah it was like the whole thing was just a little bit you could tell they were battling against some some limited budgets here but they did a good job with what they had i thought totally yeah yeah so yeah license to watch yes license license, <laughs> license approved um so yeah the next thing is we want to eventually like give some sort of rating system um, for all these movies so that ultimately we can kind of gauge it and compare one to the other and we'll have like our best film that we agree upon and like the worst one and whatever. So one idea that uh, Chris, our lovely producer, had was to rate it on a 007 scale. So like we'll, ha- we'll have the seven and then we'll assign how many zeros uh, go to the movie. So what, 10 zeros is like uh, the best maybe and one zero or no zeros. I mean, I don't know if there'll be any that have no zeros. Do you think that's a good rating system? I mean, we're here. This is the first episode. I think it's going to be a little rough if you get past like quadruple 07, quintuple 07, sextuple 07. Sept- it's hard to say. Yeah, I, I'm getting... That is that is one problem. Mm, yeah. I, I don't know what 10 is either, so... That's, well, okay, that's, what what can deck, you think of another... Deck 07? Uh, or you could just do out of... I was going to say you could do triple, maybe up to triple 07, so it could be zero, single, double, triple... Unless you want a scale of 10. Well, I'd, I would That's do it like this. I would have uh, like multiple denominations, and it's like making change. Like you got three quarters and a nickel and a dime. So I would give this one like like four Conneries, two Moors, and um, and a... Seems uh, I'm sorry, this is yeah. not more complicated yeah, than no, 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 <laughs> no, no. I mean, I think if we charted it out, I th- I'm pretty sure that we could do this. If, if And a Lazenby. I think that would be my... Always was, only uh, one yeah, only <laughs> Only one Lazenby. It's like the 99 cents on any purchase you make. It just, just can't be even. <laughs> just, uh. just to fuck things up. All right. Um, yeah, sure. Double O, triple, quadruple O. All right. Let's go. We'll let's... have to look up what... Let's say ten, 10 O's is, is the best. We'll and, call it deck uh, tuple O's until we look it up. And no O's is the worst, right? And just seven. That's just seven. Yeah, that's just a filthy seven. Um, I would give this movie maybe five O's. Say it. Say quintuple O seven. Quintuple O seven. Yeah, we'll have to get the terminology down. Uh, I, I just want to give it like a... I want to give it uh, the septuple O seven. Just... Mm. Like you know, the academic. That's high scene. praise. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. I get that, and I, I was sort of between the two. Of you, I was going with six. I don't know. I'm, I'm rethinking it now. But it, no, but I, 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 you know, the reason that I was thinking about doing uh, the seven out of ten was because I felt like it gets bonus points for being the first and for establishing so many of the tropes that became like sort of. First of all, if this thing fell on its face. We would have never seen another one, or we wouldn't have for a long time until everyone decided to license everything. And yeah, and not only does it establish the tropes, but it does them well, well enough that they yeah. bring them back. Yeah. There's no, are there any like failed tropes in this movie? No. And there's nothing that's ever going to be my favorite. It's not my favorite henchman. It's not my favorite bad guy. It's not my favorite Bond girl. It's not my favorite anything. It, it has absolutely zero things that would even probably make my top five or maybe even more. And yet they're all like none of them are embarrassingly bad. Like they all like they figured out what worked and what didn't. It's it's probably in his uh, top top five Baccarat scenes, the oh, very yeah, first absolutely. one. That's probably that's I, that's going to be close to the Bond top. Good Bond introduction for sure. Well, like he plays Baccarat in at least in at least five of them. I think. What do they what, what do they call it? Shemder Shemderfer Shemderfer. They call it something else. In that's my oh, game. they call it something else. Yeah, I thought no, it was it, Baccarat. No, it is Baccarat, but oh. they call it something else. Shemderfer. 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 I don't know. I don't know what the I, word I don't for. Know. I don't know what the fancy <laughs> French word for baccarat is. Sounds like a nice game. Yeah, it is. Um. All right. Let's see. What else do we have? Did we miss anything? Oh, that's what we should have done. We should have learned what the best baccarat hands are, and then we rate it based on what is oh, good and that one. Or just like poker hands, you know? Like yeah. Uh, they're a little easier know. to understand. I I think well, maybe we need to give this idea a, a flush. Bondy. 
<laughs> Maybe why don't we just hey. do a different? Why don't we just do a different rating system every week? I like <laughs> yeah, that. Every, every I like where your movie. head's at. Yeah. I like Change that. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. So I guess this this is us wrapping up our first episode. Um, Going out with a whimper. Yeah, Doctor No, <laughs> James Bond. Uh, Wait, we got to come up with like a signature sign off. Dead silence. There you go. <laughs> no, uh, thank you for listening, and uh, don't worry, James Bond will return. Bond. 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 Name's Bond.